I'm really excited. We have some amazing artists. Our theme for this week is kind of recycle, repurposing, finding things that you can use to create your art. So we've gathered some amazing artists um, who do just that. We've got Tess Felix. We're going to be diving into each of these people uh, as, as the day goes along here. But um, we have Tess Felix, uh, artist based out of uh, California, Stinson Beach. And we've got Sandy Gold, who is also with us, Barbara Ziesberger, and Emily, Emily Devor, excuse me, Devorin. And uh, all of these artists are using pretty amazing uh, recycled material. So I will be diving into that. I'm going to be doing some stuff here as well. Um, but before we dive into that, I want to um, just share my screen and show you um, a little bit about what um, some of the things that some little announcements here we have. So um, we have uh, that winner we want to announce. Um, this is congratulations to um, Maria Thompson. Oops, sorry, hold on a second. Uh, present, there we go. Uh, yeah, so congratulations um, uh, on this beautiful piece here. This was, I believe, from last week. Um, so she'll be getting, and she's used the hashtag, and she'll be getting a $50 gift certificate to the art store or Amazon. Um, and these are some cool things people sent in that were hashtag uh, this thing with Linda repurposing her microwave glass plate for a palette. <laughs> and uh, Sandy, who's um, using her leftover paint and making collages. It's, it's pretty cool. And these pizza boxes, which is great. I had never thought of that. Like, like, it's like pizza boxes are perfect um, art boxes, you know? And uh, like, it's so obvious, right? Anyway, this really cool thing, uh, Elizabeth's got with this mixed repurposed papers and acrylics. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that today. I'm working on some collage stuff, building up some paper. So I'll be just doing, that's what I'm gonna be doing today is just taking paper from the studio. I've got some tissue paper and some other things. And I'm gonna be, um, while we're talking, that's what I'm gonna be working on today. So, um, and then uh, look at this sardine can from Fiona these little sardine can paintings. Uh, it's so great. You know, like I could see a whole series of sardine can paintings. It's great. I, I don't think I've ever seen that done. They're just beautiful frames, you know? And uh, Nancy Gunther, uh, look at this cigar box. It's pretty cool. Um, really, really great. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop my share for a second <clears throat> and I'm gonna uh, switch over to my camera and I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing uh, right now. So uh, what I'm gonna be working on is, uh, let me just go on and move this. I'm starting with some paper and I'm going to be just applying colors on these in the beginning and then working on them. So I'll have a whole bunch started and I'm just gonna be beginning um, with color fields and then coming back to them and putting texture on them and paper, you know, collage and just different things um, as I go. So that's I just want to show you what I'm, how I'm going to be starting this. So um, I'm just going to be, and then I'll be cutting these up, these papers into pieces. So I'm doing kind of big and just some general color fields, like two to a page. And then I'll be cutting these during the call and going back into them. So I'll let these dry. And it's what's cool about this is it allows me to do some experimentation with some different colors and different mark making. Um, but I wanna have a field of color that I can use to do this with. So just some different surfaces. Okay, so that's what that's what I'm doing. Just so if you I'm going to probably do about 10 or 15 of these and by the time I'm done with 10 or 15, then I'm going to be coming back and adding paint on top of them. 
Okay, <laughs> so um, let me grab this over here. So I wanna start right now. Um, we're gonna dive into Tess's work right now. So Tess is actually, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool story. Tess, um, why don't you, hey, Ferris, you wanna highlight Tess's screen? One second. So actually oh, everyone yeah, else, to to right now, would you turn your cameras off everybody? Um, except for Tess and uh, Nick. Here, I can actually take care of it for you. One second here. Yeah, cool. There we go. So um, Tess, thanks for being here. First of all, thank you. And I just want to say, it's, it's so cool because Tess's brother, Mark, um, I've known my whole life and Mark and I were childhood buddies. I mean, probably since 10 years old. And that's how I met Tess and it's just, um, it's just kind of amazing. We've all, you know, I think all of us have done art forever. And it's just really great to, um, to have you on here and see what you're doing and to see how you're, you're, this whole recycled work kind of de developed. Cause you weren't, this happened not that long ago, right? When you started, started making this, right? Well, I've been doing this for 10 years. Oh, has it been 10 years? Okay, but when uh, I knew you as a kid, you weren't, you weren't doing this. Oh, no, 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 I've no. been doing the plastic. I've been doing the plastic, the ocean plastic art for 10 years. But no, I've been drawing my whole life. You know? I know, I, the, <laughs> the very first thing that I remember that you made, and I think you made it, was that you were really beautiful at lettering. And you, you, had a, you painted a rock at, your, at the house in, uh, I guess it was in Mill Valley, and it said, please turn me over, and you turned it over and it said, thank <laughs> you. And it was well, just this so funny beautiful- you remember that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I love the letter. I've never had that. Probably. You guys, I'm going to share my screen and show you Tess's work because you really have to see this um, to then then it'll make sense when what we're talking about. Um, oh boy. Okay, hold on a second here. Wait, wait a second. Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Let me get down. Hold on a second here. Oh boy. I think I. Okay. So. Um, so you guys, this is, why don't you tell us about this? Because if you notice, you guys, this is all so recycled. We're, Nick, we're actually still not seeing uh, the screen share. Um, uh oh, okay. Uh, we're seeing okay. your desktop right, yep, yep, right yep. now. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Resume share. Come on. It's, it's not doing it. Let um, me do this. I'm going I'm to take over the screen share from you for one second, and then we're going to try it again, okay? So okay. Give me one second. So you guys are going to see my crazy... Uh, I can stop, stop sharing it and then I can there try There we go, it. yeah, give that a shot. Give that a shot, try okay. it one more time. Thank you for being right. so patient, everyone, really appreciate it. There okay. we go. Are you seeing it? I'm not seeing it. Um, I'm seeing your full desktop right now. That's what we're seeing. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, oh God, okay, hold on. I'm just seeing my... You know, if you like, I could share the go. Here we go. Here my we go. side. Now, can you see it now? There we go, got it. You can see it now. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Can, Tess, can you see this? I can. Okay. All right. So tell us about this. Okay. Well, when I first started picking up ocean plastics 10 years ago, I wasn't aware that there was so much plastic in the ocean. And it was because of these giant storms here. Um, there was like two weeks of really high tides and major, major storms. And I think everything in the Delta flushed out into San Francisco Bay and must have come and hit Stinson Beach because the whole beach was absolutely covered in color. And it's never been that way since. I've never seen it way, that way since, but it was shocking to me. And I thought I would make a mosaic because that's what it remind me of is a mosaic. So I started off by making a little picture and, it, and I brought it home the plastic. I did a picture a woman sitting on a bed and then I hit it with a blowtorch thinking that no a heat gun thinking I'd melt it all together but it ended up just curling on the edges and I and I thought it was quite horrible and a, and a failure so I took it down to a little beach shack and left it there and the next day somebody had taken it so I thought oh somebody liked it so I'll make another one <laughs> wow <laughs> and you know I do hairdressing at home and I would I lined them up where my clients would sit and people really responded to them. And they said, oh, you can't give those away. You need to keep doing it. So I did, and then I got bigger and 
more intricate over time. And this piece on the left, this man with the uh, albatross on his shoulder is Chris Jordan. He is an artist and a um, photographer. And he has a lot of TED, TED Talks and he made a film called Albatross. That's why he has an albatross on his shoulder. Oh. And everything here is found. Um, I went to visit him at his home up in Seattle at the time and took his photo. And he gave me pieces that were actually taken from the stomachs of albatross, dead albatross uh, from the islands in um, where the big great garbage patch is. And now I'm totally blanking out because I do this sort of thing when I get nervous. But um, you know, those islands. <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's, um, I found totally there's, there's like an accumulation, blank. like, I don't know, it's in the, I don't think it's in the South Pacific, but it's, it's, it's Midway, Midway yeah, Islands. Midway Island, yes, yes. <laughs> so some, some of the plastic in this piece is actually from the Midway Islands. Um, I actually, I, the, the bird I found in an antique shop and I just put it on there because it was so crazy that I would find an albatross made out of plastic. And um, it was a vintage piece. Unfortunately, the beak broke off, but um, oh, God. because it got blown over in the wind and um, it was at a being on display somewhere. But um, anyway, so that's Chris Jordan. And if you want to see his film, um, Albatross, it's really a beautiful film about this thing. Oops, sorry. Hold on. Ooh. God, they're amazing. And how do you glue these pieces on? Like, what's the process? Um, um, I use a marine adhesive. It comes in a caulking gun. Okay. It, um, really sticks really well. It's very toxic. It's really hard to use. You know, you squirt out a little bit and, you know, you get like four tablespoons when you only want to speck. And, uh. Uh, and then it dries... The, the surface of it dries really quickly. So when you try and dab it onto your plastic, it kind of bounces off your plastic and then you have to smear it on and then you get too much. It's, it's hard. <laughs> it's it's hard, almost like you, really you hard like a, it's a thinner, you know, like a hypodermic needle to, I mean, there's so many pieces. Oh, it's crazy. In between every piece you see, there's little tiny pieces covering up the white background, you know, so there's specks. You know, sometimes I, when I'm doing eyes and around the nose and the teeth and I use, I cut pieces the size of a fingernail pairing and, you know, to get that glue, you know, from a caulking gun on a teeny weeny little piece, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's a little bit crazy. How long will, will it take to make one of these? I mean, they, they're huge. Well, this one's I very large. Uh, I think that's like 48 by 38 maybe wow. um this is about about four months wow. you know i don't i don't work for very long hours because of the uh, toxicity of the of the glue you know i i have to wear a mask and oftentimes i don't and so i i can only work for a limited time before i start feeling kind of strange and it's probably going to kill me in the long run <laughs> And I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's really, really noxious. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, I couldn't even tell you how many pieces I use on, on a piece like this or on any of them for that matter. There's thousands of pieces because you yeah. don't see all the stuff in between. In between every little piece is another piece. You know, to so cover up beautiful. little tiny white. I don't like any white to show through. I do a drawing first and then I just start filling it in. It's like coloring in a way or a puzzle. So this is on like a white canvas or a white uh, board? Yeah, I use board. I use, I use board. Okay. Tess, some people in uh, Facebook and YouTube, they're asking um, how large are these particular sizes and how large do you work um, in general? Or does it vary? Um, this piece I think is 48 by 38 maybe. I can't remember. And that's rather large for me. I think the largest I've done is 48 by 48. I'm about to embark on um, my very first abstract. And it's really? going to be a very huge piece. I'm actually two, two pieces that are going to match each other on either side of a 
doorway in a large home in Woodside. So I'm really excited about that because it's going that to be more like my background. Like, so. And I see there's quite a bit of variety in the sizes of the individual pieces you're using as well. I see there's a steering wheel there. Is that what I'm looking in the right? Yeah, like for right like, from like a toy car or something. What's the um, uh, what's the largest piece of um, debris that you've incorporated into a painting of yours? If you if you <laughs> could recall that, probably well, probably what you see on here is pretty much the biggest pieces, mm -hmm. like the corner piece, um, like a frisbee size. A frisbee size. That's how you get all the pieces, like all the black pieces, and you know how it just. It just looks like a black sofa, but then it, you look up close and there's all these black. So none of those are painted black. You just find black and stick it yeah, in. Yeah, black is pretty consistent in holding its color. You know, the, the two circles on the back of the, the couch it, are grayish and they've probably been in the ocean for a really long time and faded. Uh, but for the most part, black really is one of those that really holds its color. Um, other colors seem to fade more over time, especially the yellows. I like the pieces that have shown that they've traveled the sea. You know, I have pieces that you can tell have been in the ocean for years and years that are more, um, they have little crustaceans on them and they're more brittle and yeah. they're, they're, they're decomposing. It looks like this portrait on the left has that quality. You know, it's just, fr it's the frayed plastic and rusting old, it's so yeah. beautiful. And I add things about the person that I think is like this, this person is a musician and it has master, master there on the sleeve. He's a master musician. So I oh. always have to add things, little secrets. Um, about the person that it is of. Yeah, like messages or whatever you can want to Yeah, that only that. I know about or the sitter, so. It's exciting to me to doing these abstractly. You know, like I, I think that's so, um, I mean, there's something, it's wonderful how these are realistic, but when the subject matter is gonna go away, I'm. I think it's just, it's going to really highlight the material. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried that it's just going to look like a pile of garbage. No, yeah. I mean, it's got to become a, it's got to be a great painting. You know, that's the thing. It's you got to make it exciting. Um, and not, yeah, you're not relying on the G, the G whiz factor here is big. Like, oh my God, it's a person and it's plastic. And now you're just going to have, what can you make with plastic and say about plastic? I mean, I, I'm totally think you're going to knock it out of the park, but it's it's going to be really powerful if you can pull it off. It's going to be like 15 feet high. Oh my God! Is this two, a commission then? Yeah, two of them. Wow. So. <laughs> no, that's exciting. That's yeah. really cool. I I bet it's going to be really freeing in a way because you're not you're not going from a photograph, you know, or having to like. Yeah, Question for you, Tess. I have to imagine these pieces, when they're done, they have to be quite heavy and delicate yeah. to transport as well. Are they generally pretty, pretty heavy when no, they're, they're done? They're pretty, they're pretty durable. You know, I, I do drag them around a lot to shows and, and stack them in my car. And, and sometimes they get crushed, like, you know, a nice piece that I really liked, like a little car or something it might be brittle from the sun and get crushed. And that's, that's awful for me when when a favorite piece gets broken while it's on the piece. Um, but yeah, they are, they get very heavy, especially the big ones. I can imagine. And do you um, ever shape the pieces once you've cleaned them off and sorted them and everything like that to sort of fit a particular- Yeah, if it's the eyes and the mouth, you know, all the small areas, you know, I cut, you know, to, to, to get that little, you know, light on the end of the nose or the lips, you know, I, I need to, and the hands, hands and feet. And so the fun part for me, the struggle is the face and getting the likeness. And the fun part is the clothes and the hair, because then, <laughs> then I'm freer to uh, be able to just put things down rather than, you know, like 
I don't know if anyone's tried to paint portraits, but just one little line off and the whole face is off. Right. Yeah. Especially someone you yeah. recognize. Yeah, uh, you got to. Yeah, oh, no, Nick, sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. I mean, you just have to be so dead on with the values, with the, I mean, for a face, because we all know what a proper mouth looks like. And if you just make it slightly off or the eyes, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, we can all tell, you know, it becomes distracting. Mm -hmm. The collection process, Tess, I know you mentioned earlier that people send these items in, but, and you also do a lot of the collection yourself. How long does it take for you to source all these materials? And then also on a piece, generally, how long does that take for you to put together? Well, it's sort of an ongoing intake of uh, stuff is constantly arriving. And then I just kind of let it sit outside in my tray. And then one day I'll take it all and dump it out and start sorting and washing and then putting it in the boxes of organized color. I, I, I organize it in shades. Like I have about six boxes of different reds and six boxes of different greens and blues and and then the half tones, the mid tones, like the grays and the creams. And um, so it's it's an ongoing process. It's always going. It's not like I sit down and do it at one time. Well, I kind of do, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, uh, it must be nice to be able to say, hey, you want to go on a walk with me? And do you collect with friends and stuff? Because it's something that you could do with other people, I would think. Like everyone can get involved in the finding. Yeah, and it makes for very slow walking. You know, if, if you're up for exercise, it's not good. But if you're yeah. if you're not in a hurry, you know, it's it's a nice pastime. And okay. and when you find something special like an army man or a Barbie shoe or something, then it's you know it's like a score. It's like a it's like a treasure hunt. And then it's also repulsive. You know, when you're picking up also wrappers. There's a lot more wrappers these days and, um, you know, bottles and doggy do bags, and, yeah, <laughs> you know, right, right. it's not just the fun stuff. You know, Tess, you also sent in some great photos of um, your studio and your process. Would, uh, would you mind if I just shared those quickly on the screen and maybe you could walk us through what we're looking at here? Yeah. Those aren't on the PDF? Uh, no, they're not in the PDF. This is okay. Separate. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, did I miss them? Okay. Great. No, 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 you didn't. You're good. You're good. Uh, can you guys see this right now? Can everyone see this? Yeah. We yeah. Can see that first. Perfect. Right. Um, so, Tess, these photos here. Let me zoom in. There we go. Uh, that's my little tiny studio. It's 12 by 12. On the right side, there's a tray and that's full of plastic garbage right there. And there's a peek right in. Here, right? So this is the waiting area, you know, one day, this to clean all this and wash all this would probably take me two days. And oh then to sort God. it again, you know, to put it all in the proper bins. So I let it build up and then I'll have a big wash day. This is, a, this is what it looks like. It's really a mess, you know, I'm working amongst garbage and it's, it's sandy, it's, dirty. It has a kind of a gross energy, you know, to it because it is chemicals. The plastic is made of, you know, petroleum products. And, um, and you know that it's, you know, it's been bought and used and discarded and ended up in the sea. And, you know, I'm just glad that some animal didn't eat that particular piece. There's, there's a red bin. So after you wash all of these things, you let them dry, make sure they're clean, then you organize them into each of these bins by color, essentially. Yeah, I have more plastic than I have room for. That has to be an incredibly painstaking process. I mean, that's, oh, this is actually, before I get to that, right? Just this has to take so long. It's, this is like a work of art in and of itself, what you do here. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it does. It takes, it takes a really long time. I need an assistant. <laughs> I'm sure people would love to do that. And, um, uh, but it's funny, I know a lot of artists that work with ocean plastics around the world and we all do it. I'm not alone. I used to think I was alone, but now I found that there's many of us out there <laughs> washing garbage. This is a oh. beginning of a portrait of um, Stuart from the Image Flow, if anybody knows him in Mill Valley. 
um, he does all my photography for me. So I thought I would do his portrait. I'm doing a series of standing figures. And so he's, he's gonna be one of my standing figures. So once this, once the, um, so you start the painting off by doing an underlying sketch and do you, um, as you go on, do you have to periodically seal your materials with anything to protect them or are they just kind of sealed already because they're plastic? Yeah, they're, they're, they are just, once they're on, they're on and it's hard to get that off. You know, once they're stuck, it's hard to remove it. And so like if I make a mistake, if, I, if I'm working up close because oftentimes I have to work flat and then I can't see it until I am able to stand it up and stand away from it. And I see that something's totally wrong. But then I have to take off to fix the one piece. I have to take off like, you know, everything around it. Right. And, uh, and then, then the piece is stuck with glue. I have to pick that off. And, um, and does that sometimes damage the canvas that you work on underneath? Like, do you ever, no, the have, you ever okay, but, but it, it, sometimes it'll break a piece of plastic. Like I, I really like a certain color, you know. Mm -hmm. So, especially the brittle pieces, they don't like to be taken off and reused. You know, they might crack. Right. And there was a, one other photo you shared here with us that I just want to your your studio assistant right here. Oh yeah, that's Oliver. He was a. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to help out. Only the studio assistant. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, Tess, do you, do you find that doing this work somehow makes you feel more hopeful? Or, I mean, you're just constantly finding refuse and more and more plastic. I mean, is this helping just in terms of the hopefulness or is it, is it just like, how, how does this affect how you perceive this global problem and well it depends on the day you know yeah. usually i feel pretty hopeless uh -huh. um looking at all this plastic and you know as it's brittle and falling apart under my own fingers i know that's what's happening in the ocean that it's becoming you know turning into microplastic and which gets into every living, every living thing. thing so um yeah it's pretty discouraging but then it's you know the process of an artist is a whole different thing you know, like to be able to create something out of it and to be able to, you know, it's kind of like magic in a way where yeah. you can take one thing and, and turn it into something quite beautiful. So it's, it's double edged, you know, and then of course, you know, my hope is that everybody will go, oh, wow, look at that. That's so interesting. I use that. I use those silly toothpicks and uh, that I don't, I don't need to use those. I could use a wooden one, you know, like hopefully you, it causes some awareness. Yeah, but yeah, that, absolutely. That's far-fetched in, you know, my, in my imagination. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, just how I was thinking about it, wondering how I would feel, but I, I look at your work and it's so, there's so much beauty in it, you know, there's even beauty in the colors and of this plastic, you know, there's beauty and then there's the, the sort of the idea behind what it is and, this is an interesting contrast and um, it's, it's a cool part of your work, you know, it has that in a way. I mean, you know, my work, it's like it's paint and we don't, there's not a lot of baggage around just paint, although it's plastic and it's colored and, you know, it's still part of the problem, but um, that's, that's really, that's a cool thing. Um, yeah. You know, the nice thing about paint is you can change the hues. If you run out of a color, you can just keep going, opening up another tube. Yeah. And with the plastic, you know, I'll run out of a certain color and then I have to get inventive and it might not be the color I want, but it's the color I have. So that's been a real um, challenge, which makes the pieces better, I think, in the long run, because I've had to go out of, you know, my comfort zone. And like I start to pair pants that are blue and they end up being turquoise on the bottom because I ran out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And um, another part that's really difficult is getting depth from the, from the objects. Like um, to get, like if someone's sitting for instance and their knees are closer to the front, you know, and, and their, their body's receding behind it. And then I've got a nice like tank, you know, or a, or a Barbie or something. And I want to use that piece, but it's, 
but it's not the right shade to create depth like the, it might the legs might look short because I don't have the darkness in the back it, I, I guess I'm talking about one particular piece yeah yeah so, I mean pull it off. I think you you're good at getting depth but I mean yeah you you don't have you don't get to choose all the colors you need you know right you have to find and the, them and the shapes are all different too Another weird thing about plastic is it doesn't cut in curves very easily. You know, when you're cutting it, it cuts in um, sharp little lines and it's really hard to get a graceful curve. So I use a lot of lids of things when I need to do a shoulder or yeah. you know, a, round, a rounded area. Very cool. uh, yes, the questions are just, they're coming in nonstop for you, but uh, I'm so sorry to say this, but Nick, I do think we do have to move on, uh, just, yep. just yep. you know, we're the time here. Yep. Um, Tess, listen, thanks so much for being here. It's really, really, uh, it's super inspiring to see what you're making. And um, I'm, I'm really excited and want to stay connected about this abstract one. I, um, I really want to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to need your help, Nick. I would love to. I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. Thanks well, a lot, Tess. Thank you, that was okay. fun. Really, really great. Okay, um, so let's hop on over to Barbara and uh, I will pull up could her. Could you quickly just uh, give the people who just jumped in late what oh, you're yeah. working on, just a quick little oh, okay. run through yeah, the yeah, materials yeah. you're using. Thank you. Um, okay, so what I'm working on you guys is, I'm gonna be repurposing this stuff I'm making today and I'll turn my camera on and share that. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm making some collage papers and this is really fun. So right, what, what I'm doing right now is I'm just creating probably about 10 or 15 uh, color fields. And you'll see on this call, I'm then gonna be coming, once these dry a little, then I'm coming back into them and I'm gonna be painting on them, sanding them, doing stuff to it. And then um, I will be cutting them up and then using these in some upcoming collage uh, work I'm making. Um, one of the things we're working on in our um, membership site is collage right now. So we've got a big um, kind of time we're gonna be doing that. So I'm getting ready to start learning to do more collage. So I'm just making papers, which is, you know, the whole idea with this is so fun because I'm not, this isn't the finished product. So it gives me a lot of freedom. I'm just playing with color, um, but then I'm saving them. So. Like here's one, this one is drying. So I'm gonna go back into this one. And this is just regular paper you're using, Nick? Or is it a yeah, something? Right now I'm just using regular paper. I've got some other thinner paper, some tissue paper I'm gonna be trying in a few minutes. Um, but this is thin uh, copier paper. I like it to be thin because then when I glue it on, it looks more like paint and not like a piece of cardboard stuck on. So I tend to use it pretty thin. It does buckle a little, but once the acrylic is on here and it's dry, then it's like a piece of plastic and then I can keep painting on it. It warps a little in the beginning, but then it, you know, I'll be able to paint these, glue these down perfectly on the finish. Maybe at the end, I'll show you how I glue them on. Um, but that's what I'm doing, yeah. And it's perfect for this call because it's just, it doesn't take a lot of concentration. I'm just playing, which is super fun. Awesome, thank you for that. And I think Barbara's yeah, here yeah, as well. Sure. Okay, let me uh, grab my other camera here. All right, so I believe I said Barbara, is that correct? Yes. Hi, Hi Barbara. How are let you? Me, uh, welcome, and thanks so much for um, being here. I'm excited to, uh, let me share my screen and show you guys. I think it helps to see what people are working on while we're talking about it. Share, let me get to the start of this thing, oh boy. Resume share. Oh boy. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. Let's see. There we go. Your screen's up. Yep. Uh, just um, it's got the. Just need to get the PDF. Almost there. Thank you for being so patient, everyone. This is it. Here we go. Let me get it here. Um, hold 
on a second. We on the right, where are we? That looks good. Yeah, we see Barbara's name right here. Okay, cool. There I just want yeah. to make sure that for some reason this thing is. Okay, Barbara. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so I love the subtlety in your work and just what you're doing with this. I guess it's corrugated cardboard paint. Tell, tell us about this. It's so cool. Well, I, you know, just using materials that I have. So I, I just started using cardboard um, because we had an abundance of Amazon boxes around the house. Yeah, no kidding. And, um, and I, you know, I was initially, I think I was hesitant because it's not archival, but I, I didn't really want to uh, I didn't want that to prevent me from just working with it and playing with it and experimenting with it because it, it really is kind of an interesting material. Um, so um, I've been working on um, wood panels and I've been working on paper and um, I've been using cardboard and um, I've been using um, uh, a painter's drop cloth. That's the the um, fabric you see in there, it's just that sort of canvasy drop oh, yeah, box like that painters canvas. used. I had one of those, I thought that had a nice texture. So I was cutting up my drop cloth. And, um, and I think the initial inspiration for this project was um, this poster that I found um, around the neighborhood. It's this, um, we pay for unwanted cars, vans, and trucks. And um, these posters are plastered all over my neighborhood. And I thought, that's kind of an interesting poster. Maybe I can use that. So I didn't so much like the, the, um, the, the uh, font so much as just the, the shapes of the font. So I was chopping it up just to get some really interesting shapes in there. And, um, What's and cool I just, is that you're using, I love how you're using, you're using, you're finding stuff, but then you're using the paint kind of washing over it and creating these really muted palettes. Right. Just trying to um, pull it all together, I think. And I, I like that kind of, um, you know, it's an overused term, but that sort of wabi-sabi kind of uh, worn kind of looks like it's seen better days kind of a feel yeah. to it. So, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm working on paper. Um, some of the uh, other materials are, um, I, I was, there was some, uh, somebody took a tree down in our front yard and I wanted to do a rubbing of the pattern in the tree stump and it didn't work out so well. So I thought I would just try to do a rubbing of the bricks on the side of the house. So um, this piece on the right, there's a piece of white paper that has sort of this graphite sort of speckly stuff. And that's the, um, it's just a rubbing, it's a graphite rubbing of the bricks on the side of the house. Um, so I'm just trying to use, you know, materials, just pulling stuff out of the trash, you know, the inside of um, security envelopes are kind of fun because they have funny little patterns that can be used. Um, just recycling stuff. This one on the right, that's, that's an envelope. Um, the top section there, it says, please recycle this envelope. Um, I like to use... Um, uh, sketchbook paper, the little perforations. Oh, right. Really fun to pull off and twist. And so, how do you glue it all together? Like, what are you using to glue it? So, on the paper pieces, I'm using, I'm gluing it down to um, uh, vellum, basic um, uh, vellum. Oh, really? Like mixed media. It's, it's a, uh, you know. So it's like a thick, a thick plastic. No, it's a, it's a paper. It's okay. A, it's a moderate, it's a little thinner, I'd say, than watercolor paper. 
but it's a smooth finish, sort of a mixed media type paper. Um, have you made these really large yet, or is this the biggest you go? I've I've been working on twelve by twelve inch um, panel square panels, and uh, the paint the one on the left that you have pictured that's a twenty by twenty. So I'm trying to scale up. So I um, scanned the poster, and then I. Um, and copied the scanned image into a Word document and enlarged it so that I could get the shapes and then sent that over to Staples for photocopying so that I could just work with some large um, type shapes. Yeah. That's what you see on the edges. And I'll probably have to go back over that with paint, either cutting them out and painting over them or using a Posca paint pen or something over them because I don't think the, uh, I'm not sure the toner um, ink will be too light fast, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, God, it's we'll really see. beautiful. It, I think what you're doing, what makes it interesting is that you're, you're not just finding things, but you're kind of harmonizing them all together by throwing these whitewashes on it, you know, and which makes the, it's, you know, really like your palette's super, super limited. Do you ever think about bringing in like, you know, a chunk of cadmium red or anything? Cause I mean, I love it, but I'm wondering about that, you know, like what about color? Uh, color is, you know, I work a lot with um, Chinese ink, and so I'm used to working in with a limited palette. I, I use do a lot of black and white and earthy tone things, um, and color is a challenge for me. So I, I have I do have some work that I've done in color, also a very limited palette, um, pinks and sort of off greens and things, yeah. but. Um, that's gonna that's gonna be a project for me. I, I do I love color and I love what you know. There's a lot of artists I I love their work and it's colorful, um, but um, getting to the point where I can feel comfortable putting colors together is gonna that's another project for me. So yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. So great. You're just like, well, it's not my, I'm not super confident in color. And so I'm just having a great time where I'm at. And it's, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few people on Facebook asking, and my apologies if you already said no, this, uh, but how, how do you adhere these materials to the supports? Okay, that's right. You did ask that. Um, so for the works on paper, um, I just use the Elmer's purple stuff. It's just this, uh, it's a glue stick. Elmer's glue stick, and it's. The, I like the purple because um, you can see whether you've missed a spot, and then it disappears. And for the works on um, wood panel, I use uh, gloss medium to glue it down. And um, for the the cardboard, I just pretty much press it down. For the paper. Paper, when it gets damp, it starts to buckle up. And so you have to, um, you have to kind of push it down really, really tightly and continue to go over it to get it really flat as it starts to buckle when it gets um, damp. So I use these, um, it's a plastic um, sort of a scraper. Uh, I think I ordered these, I think they use these in um, car body shop um, places to, I'm not sure what they do with them. I guess they smooth areas when they're doing body work on cars, but these are great little plastic tools. Um, and that's what I use to smooth the bumps out of the paper and pull the excess, um, medium out from underneath the piece. So that's what I use on the wood panels. And then I put, um, after the piece is completely glued down, I'll put, um, I'll use the gloss medium to put an isolation coat down. And then I'll use a matte varnish over that. 
Golden or Liquitex. And do you have to be pretty generous with your application of the glue or is there a specific you know, ratio that you use or anything like that? Or you just kind of more feel it out? I just smear it on and, uh, it, and, and as I sort of squeegee it out with the plastic thing, it, you know, I just have to wipe up the drips. I probably use a little more than I need to, but I'd rather have more glue than less. So. Do you have to seal these with anything or uh, to, you know, to finish it, to keep it in place, or is it kind of sealed with the paint? It's pretty, see, the, the gloss medium really holds it down. And then the isolation coat of gloss medium also seals it pretty well. And then the final varnish coat. That's fantastic. Work. So what was the inspiration for you starting off with this direction of work? I know you said that you had your Am these Amazon boxes laying around your house, but um, I imagine that, you know, it sounds like this is, this looks like work that has something that's more deeply rooted than just the Amazon boxes laying around. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I like the look of uh, the corrugated cardboard. I think it's just really interesting. Um, it's a, actually, you know, um, I think cardboard's the Rodney Dangerfield of art materials. It, 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 there's yeah. not a lot of respect there, um, but it's, it's really interesting. I like working with paper and I think the cardboard is just an extension of that. And um, it's plentiful and it's cheap and uh, it's, it's really fun to work with. It's, you can, uh, and, and I think the most boring thing is just a plain piece of cardboard. It's when you start peeling the layers off and, um, you know, um, distressing it is when it, it, it gets, kind of fun and a, and a lot more interesting. So you can, um, the, I don't know if anybody knows this, but the, the way that you get to the, the corrugated part is you just simply um, dampen one side with some water and wait a few minutes and then you can just peel it off. So if you wait. Can you um, take your camera screen so we can see what you're doing? Cause that looks cool. This so, oh, yeah, that, so here's a piece, and this actually isn't damp. This one's coming off pretty easily. But if you if you wait, a, like say a couple of minutes after you've dampened it, the um, the paper just comes right off, and it's really clean. If you don't, and you pull it early, then you've left some of the um, paper on, and you've pulled some of it off, and that makes for also a really interesting kind of effect. So. Um, it's also really sculptural because you can crush it up and smush it and um, it, you know, it's just, it's, a, it's, it's surprisingly malleable and the more you smush it up, the more interesting it gets and you can poke holes in it and tear it and manipulate it. So it's, it's been kind of fun to work with. Yeah, it's really cool. And, you know, I was thinking something, you know, both, well, everyone on this call you included, Tess, everyone. It's like, there's this neat thing about discovering, finding as you go, there's all these surprises, you know? It's not like you're planning something and it's gonna be predictable. You, you don't know what you're gonna find. You're gonna peel the cardboard and there'll be something underneath it or a number. Or, and I, that's great, that's fun. Yeah, it's, I think, um, you know, it's about finding those interesting things in, in just everyday objects. Yeah, um, yeah, right, and, right. You know, yeah. and setting up situations, I think, where um, you have less control and that tends to cause marks to happen that you wouldn't be able to make otherwise, so. Um, yeah, your hand's like out of it a little bit. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Very some people asking on Facebook, what's the largest piece that you've ever worked on? And do you have plans to work um, any, like a very, very large? I do. Uh, you know, I don't know um, I, what I, I'm working on a 20 by 20 inch right now. Um, I have um, a 48 by 48 wood panel um, that I want to try to work on. And, um, but I'm going to have to work my way up to that. So. 
and uh, I, you know, it's not it's not archival, um, but I did do some research about that the other day, and there are um, sprays that you can use to treat um, non-archival papers. They're called deacidification sprays. So I'll probably be looking into that a little bit more when I start making larger pieces. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that because you could probably use the same kind of sealant that you would use on like uh, charcoal pieces or something like that because that's such a delicate piece of work to begin with. Um, and it really is the acid. That's the, that's the enemy of the of paper pieces. Right, right. And I like to, I do other collaging um, with ink, old ink paintings and um, book, old book pages. And the ones that I like the best are the, um, the really old kind of brown ones. And those are the most fragile. They just really want to crumble, but they're, they're just really beautiful. The color is beautiful. And um, I'm going to see if I can um, work with some of that stuff with this um, deacidification spray, see if that helps sort of slow the, the process of yeah. um, you know, the breaking down of the piece. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're going to have um, all, uh, all your information and if you want to find and see more of your work and some of the materials that you've listed, same thing with Tess on our um, the PDF that we're going to create for the call. So you'll be able to get that, you guys uh, going to kitchentableartproject.com. But um, uh, yeah, listen, thank you so much. It was really great. I wanted to know, where are you located? I'm in Silver Spring, Maryland, just outside Washington, DC. Okay. And, and one other question, what, who, who, what artists are sort of inspiring to you that you know, you've looked towards that do this? Or like, who do you love that, you know, any collage people that? Oh, gosh. Um... I mean, I there's think a lot of folks on, on there are a lot of folks on Instagram that I yeah. I look at, um, to, and What's it's because I just see their work. There's a particular artist whose work I absolutely love. I don't think he's working in cardboard right now, but um, his name is Luke Pierre, okay. and he does a lot of paper uh, collage type work. Yeah, and um, it's just I, I love his work. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's funny because when I think of, yeah, I think of Kurt Schwitters and, you know, I think historically, but it's kind of wide open now, you know, like there's just so yeah. many people doing this, but there's historically, I mean, there's some, but um, I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. Um, Taylor White is another one. Um, he does a lot of work with um, fabrics and paper and cardboard and spray paint. Um, He's yeah. doing some really interesting work too. Yeah. So. Well, listen, thank you so much for um, sharing what you're making here. And it's uh, it's cool. I love the canvas. I love gluing the canvas. You know, like the canvas is a structure, is a piece of art material we use, but just using it on its own glued in, you know, that's right. kind of fun. Thanks. Well, yeah. thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, we'll have all her info in the links and uh, we'll probably follow up with a couple more questions on, um, you know, some of the materials you're using, but awesome. Thank you so Great. much. Thanks. Okay. Bye. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna, um, so I'm just still working away over here on this thing. Uh, these are, so now you can see I'm taking these papers and, you know, a lot of the cool stuff starts to happen when you put paint on top of other paint and then remove it. And you saw like this was, like this is such a beautiful surface and I'm gonna be cutting these up. Once they're dry, I'll be using these together with other colors. But I tend to, um, you know, roll the paint off. This one, uh, this is pretty cool. So this is, uh, this was this one I was doing a minute ago and pressing tissue paper into it and then parts of the, you know, the paint is acrylic, so it's like a glue. And so it glues to the tracing paper and kind of tears it and makes a pretty amazing surface. But then you can take the tissue paper, and this is why it just starts getting more and more 
you just make more and more. And this is the tissue paper that I put on top. And then I'm gluing that onto another paper. So now I have this as a collage piece as well, not to mention the original one, which I'm gonna go back into in a minute. But you know, there's something cool about, like you can cut this out now. If I cut these into shapes and you just get these amazing stripes and they're so fresh. Uh, so um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of continuing to work on these. I'm gonna do some purple ones next, I think. Um, yeah, I've got about, I don't know, you know, I've got about 10 or 15 going here. Um, so I'm just gonna keep, keep going on those while we're talking. And Nick, um, are you working with any kind of, um, like when you're, well, let me turn on my camera so it doesn't go black. <laughs> are you working with any kind of uh, design, precon you know, preconceptions in your head? Really, or are you just kind of as, feeling as it out? Said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm leaving that out entirely. I just wanna have, you know, something, some samples that I can choose from. So, you know, well, let me just show you. So if I, if I, I'll do this more at the end, but um, if I, I can cut this out once this is dry, let's say, and I can have a beautiful shape, you know, I can start gluing on top of here and bringing, I can design with it, you know, I'm, so that's, I'm going to be working on, I'm not making a picture now, I'm just making parts of a picture. And that's kind of fun because I don't have to worry about trying to make a picture. I'm just making cool surfaces and backgrounds. So no, no preconceived idea. Just, I want these color, I want it to be interesting and exciting to look at just on its own. Very cool, very cool. It's a great way to take your hand out of, uh, out of the piece so you don't get things too precious to begin with. Totally. Um, okay, let me get my camera again. How are we doing on time here? Oh, wow, it's already one. It's amazing how fast this time goes. Um, okay. Whoops. Okay. So um, what I want to do is bring on Emily. Uh, let me grab my document. Oops. Okay. Hey, Emily. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. So um, where are you right now? I am at home. I, I'm not in my studio because I just am a little bit trepidatious about going into a building of 100 artists at this time. There's not a lot of people here. Just so you know, there's probably like 10. But um, yeah, it's been pretty pretty light. I come in because I need the internet, but um, I've been definitely been working at home. So, wow, you have quite a setup at home. Okay. Looking, that, this is yeah. what I had before I ever had a studio outside of my home. <laughs> okay. All right. So you guys going into Emily's studio, whenever, you know, you should see her studio because she's in the same building as me, but it is it's the most colorful, like it's, it's the big, it's one of the biggest hits on the open studios in our building. Cause there's just so much color and so much inventiveness and just cool stuff being made. I have not seen these before. So just, so what are you doing? Tell us, tell, I know it's all recycled, but what, what's happening here? Cause you got a lot of different things you make. Okay. I, I'm a fiber artist. So unlike a lot of the other people you have had on, I, I use no glue. Oh, I that's have, why you call it fiber. I'm fiber, like, exactly. Not? So uh, I use all different kinds of methods, but no glue. That's a rule for me. I call myself a sculptural basket maker. I do not use traditional materials. Obviously, I use everyday objects and try to make what I call transordinary vessels. Everything is a vessel, a three-dimensional piece uh, that is a holder of a story for me. And I get a lot of gifts from uh, a whole bunch of people who I meet sometimes at shows or whoever finds out about me. Uh, I'm going to throw this away, would you like it? And so my materials are a lot of other people's discards. 
And uh, that's the challenge for me. And that's what I love to put together. And are you changing the color of this stuff to, to like you're getting, or is this like this basket on the right, like that palette, did you, is that what you are those just found objects, all that? Absolutely, that's electrical wire. Oh and uh, flannel pajamas torn apart and uh, plastic letters, refrigerator letters. And I am known for my use of cable ties. So, or zip ties, whatever oh, you yeah. call them. And so those are what, uh, a lot of what you see in this piece on the right also, they're cut off. Uh, I call, they're, I use them in two different ways. Sometimes I'll leave them long and hairy and sometimes I'll cut them off at the butt, just like you're seeing on the right-hand side. And you don't go out and buy cable ties. You just, you just get them donated. Everything's well, found. Actually, the cable ties is the only item that I buy. I buy them wholesale because I use them by the thousands. Everything <laughs> else is donated or found. Wow. And do you sell these in galleries or how, who? Yes, gets I, sh I show and sell all around the country. Small wow. galleries, small museums. Uh, I do some booth shows, uh, all of that. And what, what, are, what is it that people, you know, what do they say? What do they, what do they find in your work? Like, you know, your collectors, it's just, what are they, what kind of people are they? I mean, they're probably kind of like you, but I mean, what, right? Like who, who are they? Who's buying this and what, what are they? A lot of people who, uh, I, I have a lot of architects. I have a lot of home decorators who are my uh, favorite, you know, clients. Cause they, I'm not doing an, uh, shall I put it this way? No one else is doing what I'm doing. So what people react to is their unusual quality uh, and they, getting closer to look at the detail and realize that it's something they recognize, an everyday object. And so yeah. I, my desire is to have a, a, a view from afar and have you tempted enough to come up close and look inside. Then my surprises are always the detail. They're so cool, they're so beautiful. Thank you. Are you using you a switch sewing? to the next slide? Nick, yeah, you switch to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This one's great. So you can tell the one on the left uh, is uh, probably recognizable. The materials, all different uh, audio cable, computer cable, phone wire, uh, a lot of uh, what we have in our lives. I, f I think of myself as kind of an historian because I use what's around in our lives. I use what's common ordinary material to everyone. I feel like I have a whole basket of that stuff for <laughs> you in my studio because I personally <laughs> have so much electrical crap that I don't even know what goes to what. That's the way I get my best materials. The one on the right is a is made out of all kinds of denim. I have yeah. a friend who uh, makes denim pouches, but she does not use the seams. So that's all the seams and the extra uh, fly fronts and the pockets and things like that that she gives me. That's a double wall, pretty classic coiled basketry interior. And outside is much like a collage, only all sewn on. Is this um, uh, like there's Indian basketry and you know using pine needles to make baskets and stuff? Have you studied the way those are put together? And are you using oh, yeah. weaving? Absolutely. You, in, in both of these pieces, you can see uh, they are a technique called coiled basketry, and that is definitely the same as what you're referring to. The technique uh, using. Uh, Native American ingredients, pine needles being one of them that I think you're referring to, is a coiled basketry. Oh, okay. I, I teach those basic basketry methods uh, also in my studio, but I use coiled basketry probably the most of any of the techniques. Because they look like, I mean, that's what's kind of cool about this. They're, there's a traditional look to these because you're, they're so, they're such craftsmanship 
but then it's this goofy material. And I, I love that, that juxtaposition, you know? Exactly. That's what I'm after. <laughs> and, are, and is it true? Like, are you really like, I mean, I've never seen anything like this, but I mean, there, there aren't a lot of people doing this. That's correct. I mean, that's crazy, right? Like you've got, a, you've, you're the only one kind of in this genre, like, no wonder you're busy. <laughs> right. True, true that. And I've yeah. combined um, the cable tie, uh, zip tie aspect to them, which is basically my signature at this point. They're in every piece I do, no matter what. Uh, even if just a few, even if a lot of them. So no, I have not found anyone else doing what I'm doing. Wow, that is so trippy. And, and amazing, you know, like, so what's the craziest stuff you've, biggest thing, or like some of the materials you, you know, that you, it really opened your eyes as to what was possible. I mean, I, I could see these being so much bigger, you know, like I could see a, a six foot, you know, urn made out of technology cables in the Google headquarters. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. monumental work with this refuse sort of recycled thing would be really powerful. Have you worked large? Oh yes, and I've, one of my largest pieces is as tall as I am and it uses all my favorite colors and all different kinds of materials. Uh, right before this whole stay at home thing hit, uh, I am working on a commission for Marin General. I'm using, which is the hospital near us to explain to everybody. Uh, it's uh, been redone, rebuilt, added to, uh, enlarged and they have a grant, they, think they're having a, a grand reopening on in August and I'm doing a piece with a bunch of uh, four other nurses uh, with all the detritus that has come out of the hospital for months before this beautiful different colored plastic I was thinking about it when Ferris was talking uh, when Tess was talking um, it's all, I've sorted it and we are going to do a, a very tall, perhaps five foot, six foot sculpture that will sit in the lobby of the new hospital. Oh yeah, wow. Did when you, I mean detritus, what I mean is like the caps off all the different meds. They're all different, a variety of colors. They're uh, all of the uh, things that usually get thrown away. Uh, I'm gonna try to use in this sculpture. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's, you know, we think of pill bottles and prescriptions and all that stuff is not being, it's not beautiful, but certainly that will, you know, it's just, it's what Tess is doing, you know, it's just taking this stuff and making it into this new form where you notice it and appreciate it, you know? Right. Wow. I love your home studio. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> God, kids, if, if you have kids come over and like do stuff with you because that's like my, if I had a house like that when I was a kid, it would have, I, oh my God. I do go into third through uh, eighth grade and then sometimes college classrooms and do art with kids. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's just great. Thank you. Yeah, really, really. What are those dolls behind you? I'm just curious. I kind of like those. <laughs> So yeah, over and when my kids were younger, uh, I made them clothes and I made them dolls. And so those are just examples of dolls that I used to. That was a lot of years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. God. Well, that, thank you so much. It's just, thank uh, you. Paris, is there any questions on there uh, about uh, her work? And uh Brandon actually uh, took over hosting for me for one second, uh, just because I was uh, helping uh, set up the Instagram live again. Um, oh, okay. I guess one one question, um, Emily was, how did you get started with uh, this with your work? Like, was what was the? I know that's the question everyone asks, but <laughs> what was what was like the underlying inspiration, if there was one? Uh, it kind of bizarre because uh, in the uh, '70s and '80s, I was doing macrame and selling that and doing large orders for curtains and plant hangers and all kinds of stuff. Took a one day workshop. Now I give one day workshops, but I took a one day workshop at, in the basement of the old uh, 
uh, Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. What made me choose this, I don't know, which was uh, sea kelp basketry and had that aha moment in the class, what, deciding that I had to go three-dimensional. So I then devoured every basket book I could possibly find. And uh, I just got into basketry on my own. I'm self-taught, but went way beyond and without uh, knowing it, got wilder, wilder, wilder in terms of the use of my materials. I still use the basic basketry techniques, but my materials are drastically different. That's amazing. It's so funny when you mentioned uh, the basement of the old Academy of Sciences, that just brought up some deep childhood memories for me there. <laughs> Your work has uh, some similarities to, I mean, I'm sure a lot of fabric artists get this, but some similarities to the structures you see in um, the sculptures of Ruth Asaba. Are you familiar yes. with the work? Oh, oh, indeed, yes. Yeah, yeah. so those organic pulsing structures. That's, that's immediately what I saw. Yeah, Do they have a, a general size that you uh, tend to make these pieces or sort of? Uh, the, well, more general size is a pedestal. Uh, I'd like my work to be seen uh, either in someone's home or in um, a show on a pedestal. So I want you to be able to see all around it. It's three dimensional. So there's not a front and uh, you know a back. There's uh, all sides to it. So about a tape, you know, not a shelf, piece, but a table or a pedestal size, if that makes sense. Yeah. Now, you said that you started using zip ties uh, to sort of bind everything together. Did you always do that? Because that doesn't seem necessarily like the most obvious binding material for, <laughs> for weaving, I would say. I mean, I love it, but just it's so um, unique. Uh, I didn't always use it, but I have used it quite a lot in the last 15 years, so I'm known for it. Wow. Um, I guess another question is, just because of everything that's going on right now, have you had any issues with sourcing these materials? Some of them are so essential to your practice, or do you just have a stockpile ready to go? I have a stockpile, but also, frankly, I like everyone else, I looked around and I said, what do I have? Uh, I mean, I just made a piece of, uh, that I finished in, in the first couple of weeks of um, this stay at home. Oh, I don't wow. know if you can Look see. Uh, so yeah, I took that. I took three office bins, which I had here, and I decided to do random weave, which is another classic basketry technique. And I used all the ribbon and uh, plastic lacing, things I just had around, and that was the whole idea. And this is sort of a, a house structure-y looking, uh -huh. you can tell. Very so cool. That, you know, that, that's, I, I take advantage of what's around. Um, yeah, right. Opportunistic artist. Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here. We're, we're I wanna hop on over to see Sandy's things, but. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm keeping the ICB building warm for you. Okay. So when you can... I can't wait to get back. Yeah, yeah. Listen, thanks a lot, really. It was so cool. I, I love looking closer and hearing about it. I've never actually spent that long talking to you. So thank you. Thank you, and Nick. Again, we'll have all her info and all kinds of stuff, um, little tips and tricks she's shared on that um, PDF that you guys can get at kitchentableartproject.com. Okay, so let's hop on over. Thanks, thanks again, Emily. Um, let's uh, hop on over to Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hi, how you doing? Good, super appreciate you just um, listening and watching. I don't know if oh, you guys sure. all know each other, but I mean, I wonder if Emily knows, oh. if you guys are all, there's a sort of a, you know, sisterhood here of people doing this kind of work. I've had a, heard a lot of similar threads. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, so let me uh, share my screen so we can share, uh, I can show you, um, Share, present your work. Um, Looks good, we can see it, Nick. Okay, good, yeah. So uh, Sandy Schimmel Gold. Do you go by all those three or is it yeah, I Sandy? I do, because I was um, Sandy Schimmel for 50 years, so. Okay, okay. Most so people know that name. <laughs> okay, all right. So I can't wait to hear about this. So why don't you just tell us, I mean, I can see that it's collage, but I'm curious about scale and sources and. Okay. 
Well, all of my work is made out of paper um, and it's all mostly either junk mail or postcards that I've gotten. I use um, calendars, wallpaper samples. Um, Christmas cards are great because they have a lot of metallic in them. Uh, on the piece on the right, um, the veil part is painted, but and my handwriting is in some of those pieces in the background. So I don't color the paper, that's the color it is. So it's a very similar story. I find something, I sort it, I put it away. I've got bins behind me of colors. Uh -huh. And um, when I start a new piece, I just kind of go through and pick a color I like and then find all the pieces that match. And I use an old school paper cutter, like, you know, like a, a guillotine. Oh, really? To, to um, chop up the pieces so I can sort them into the bins and then strips. And then um, I use scissors to cut little squares. And why are you using, do you, do you, so you, you just make squares. So these are like chips, squares right. that you can pose pictures with. Why, why that way? Why not tear them up or what, you know? <laughs> well, because this whole thing started when I saw a really beautiful um, portrait that was either stained glass or a mosaic. And I saw it in Venice. So it was a portrait of a woman. It was all transparent or translucent all these pieces of glass that seemed like they were attached to glass and lit from behind, but it was also grouted. So I started this whole process of, oh, I'm gonna make that. I never made stained glass. So I tried using glass. I couldn't find all the colors. I don't like cutting glass. Then uh. I tried painting, cause I'd always been a painter. So I tried doing paintings that looked like mosaics. And my style is very contemporary, like hard edge, you know, one color here, another there. And one day um, my parents who were cleaning out their house said, hey, we have all these old greeting cards. Do you want them? And here's a paper cutter and voila. That was like the eureka moment. And that's where it went. And when was that? When did that moment happen? Oh, uh, that was about 20 years ago. <laughs> wow. So it's been, it really changed from where I started out to where I am now. And now it's just second nature. I just kind of go. So when you when you um, finish a piece like this, um, how do you seal it or do you have to seal it? I do seal it. And depending on where it's going to be, I might use a UV coating to keep the paper from fading. Um, and I also do a, a lacquer, so a water-based lacquer of some kind. Some of them are very shiny and some are matte. That's fantastic. I mean, I also, you know, you mentioned that you draw sort of from contemporary, it almost seems like pop culture references. Have you always had a fascination with um, pop culture references? It's such a strong yeah, thing. I, in your art. The, the deeper meaning behind the portraits is that we are constantly being told how to look and we, all of these things are ads. So we're getting these that. ads about this is what beauty looks like. And so I chop up those ads and repurpose them to make another image. And so the messages are kind of obliterated. And I love that. I love that. It's very Warholian for sure. At, well, I kind of grew up in that era, so that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that that's where my my aesthetic would go. The piece on that's on the right is a, a garden, and that was totally improvisational. Um, I call it MacArthur's Park because it took so long to make it, and I'll never have that <laughs> recipe again. I don't know what I was doing, obviously so different from that, but now I'm kind of going off into abstract pieces as well as portraiture. Nick, are there any more images in the slide uh, in this yeah, show see. that we could just go through here? Just yeah, look at that. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, wow. Look at these. So these really get quite large. Oh, yeah. I've done, I think the largest piece I did was a life-size portrait of somebody she was lying down. So it was about six feet long. Um, and I've done other pieces, um, four foot by five foot, that's... So I, I, my normal go-to is about 30 by 40 or somewhere in that neighborhood, but it just kind and, of depends. And what, I mean, I have to imagine these must get incredibly heavy You're using all of this ad paper. What kind of support do you use to well, they're on canvas, and so the larger pieces are on 
canvas that have a lot of support in them, but they're they're not that heavy. I've tried using wood, and uh, that's heavier. So, is there? Um, I mean, I see that you're using. Uh, is that Britney Spears that I see right there? In the... No. No. Okay. I wouldn't have faulted you for that. That's awesome. I think that's. Uh, I just. I looks like you're drawing from um, continuously. Like this one. Your... Uh, the image on the right here, it looks like there's people that I recognize here, although maybe that's sort of the point though, like the, these all kind of look like- Yeah, they're not, they're not. They're only, there's only one person that's based on and it's Kate Moss. It's the bottom one in that grouping. Oh, I love that. So um, you don't necessarily start off with a pop culture- No. Um, obvious no, And I, I never have a plan unless I'm doing a custom piece. It, it really? always just kind of goes. I, the impulse is the action, whatever I feel like is where I go. That's very cool. Uh. And is it always women? Do you sometimes do? No, like I do men too. Okay. Not often. Granted, we're not as interesting, but still. <laughs> it's the angles. Yeah, right. And lips. Somebody, I noticed once that almost all the women that I do have full lips and they do. Um, well, I think that the, the imagery that you use, it very, it's very much in line with um, what you talked about. Uh, you know, I don't know if, if um, it would be interesting to see if what you have, do you have a piece here of a, of a man that you did or is it primarily? Um, Not in the pieces that I sent, but I yeah. think most of the men that I've done are either custom pieces, you know, that I've done for someone or some pop people. So I've done the Beatles and some other pop stars. I have a piece that I started doing. Um, if you want to look on camera. I just, yeah, oh wow, oh, lovely. That's fantastic. So this is how I start out. I don't really need to, I used to do these incredibly detailed paintings. Uh -huh. I realize I'm covering them all up because there's never, the only canvas on here on this piece is the eyes. And that so might change as I, go forward. So with that, that Prince piece, for example, what is that, what are you making those marks with initially? Uh, pencil. Pencil. And then this is, I, I did some, some paint, but that doesn't mean anything. God, you got, you got his likeness down. Just, that's fantastic. I'm a huge Prince fan, so. <laughs> a lot of people are. Yeah, that's weird, right? Um, so where um, do you see, where do you see your work um, going forward with this? I mean, it's such a luscious topic, luscious body of work. Oh, let me turn my camera on here. Oh, uh, is this the source material you're working with? It seems like it's never ending. Um, it is never know. ending. And yeah. I'm lucky that um, some people give me their Christmas cards at the end of the season. And, but if you check your mail, so listen out there, you get postcards constantly from Gold's Gym or the church around the corner or um, I used to swipe gallery cards back when, back in the day. Um, if I go someplace like a tourist place, I take rack cards, but mostly it's stuff that comes into my house. So I've got a, a bunch of stuff right behind me because I'm looking for this peach color. So this is a, a card. This is some kind of advertising. This is season's greetings. Um, this is from a uh, insurance company. A card <laughs> from my husband. So awesome. I even have some Valentines from my kid went from 20 years ago. So I just save everything and then I'll use it someday. So would you say that it almost seems like part of your process is you sourcing these materials and organizing them? And so it sounds like what you're saying is sort of like, intuitively something speaks to you and you move on on that. Is that right. what I'm hearing correctly? Yes. And so like it, I, there was one art piece that I was working on. It was a portrait of a young girl. And as I was doing it, I was listening to music and I heard this song and it was minor key. And I thought, this sounds like it's Yiddish. And then I looked it up. It wasn't, it was in German and it was about the triangle shirtwaist factory fire in New York City. And when I started reading about it, then all of a sudden that portrait of a girl turned into this very, very depressing piece. Um, I had pictures of the victims and then I burnt the edges 
I had some of them because the victims in the fire jumped out of windows or were trapped inside the factory. So I had pins and measuring tapes. And so I'll use other materials as well when I'm creating something if I think it's important to the image or what I'm trying to say in that particular piece. Now that, that piece you mentioned that it was um, has a, it's an incredible incredible gravity to it. How did that piece turn out at the end? Were you pleased with, with the outcome? Well, I loved it, but if I told anyone the story, they were so <laughs> Like, this is beautiful. You're like, yes, it is. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why are all these, why do I smell smoke? Like, I, I don't know. If you smell, I don't smell smoke, you do. Well, so, no, I, uh, I do incorporate other material right. into my work. What's that big piece behind you, that gold one behind you, the big that, one? That, okay, so that's another thing that I had no idea what I was doing, and that, that's a slightly different technique. Instead of gluing directly on, I piece all the pieces together and cut the shapes out and then glue them on. So I don't know what that's going to be, but it's there so I can look at it and let it bug me. And then do you sell your work in galleries or how? I do. I'm in a couple of galleries in uh, Florida and Richmond. And then I also, I, I have a gallery. It's not open because of the, the virus, right. but right. Um, I do have it there as well. Wow, you create your own gallery. Yeah, it's a vanity project. Uh -huh. Well, that's good. That's great. Where, where are you located again? I'm in Midlothian, Virginia, which is outside of Richmond. Okay. Wow. And, and there's a couple of people who want to know, yeah. how do you organize your materials? Um, well, okay, so when I get something in, um, just raw materials, as I call it, I'll chop it up into the colors and, and recycle the stuff I don't use. So, um, so I, I'll take it, chop it, and it goes into a bin based on color. I've heard that earlier. And so I've got bins all over behind me and, and drawers full of paper by color, then I cut it and put it into, into the strips. And then that, that goes into uh, another bin, a smaller bin. And then I, when I'm working on something, I, I try to find like a key color. I want this shade of peach. And I go through my bin to find things that are similar because I don't want it to match exactly. Um, Cause then I might as well paint, you know, if I wanted it to be all the same color and that, um, and then as I go along, I never put the same piece next to the next piece. I don't know why I think someone's gonna notice and call me out on it, but that's just <laughs> what I do. So um, that's how I organize my the paper anyway. Drawers and, and drawers of it. Do you, I don't know if you, my apologies if you already answered this, but um, clearly I've, um, command over paint and you're familiar with you know those techniques what was it about this medium that spoke to you over say you know more with traditional materials let's say well I was like I said I was always a painter and my style was nothing unusual not you know nothing that hasn't been seen before and I went to visit um, America's most beloved cowboy artist is what he called himself and showed him some of my work once this is a long time ago and he said anybody can paint come up with something else so that kismet wow. moment that eureka thing with the cards and and cutting little squares and incorporating it onto actual paintings that i've done kind of got me into something that um i just love it like like i it's second nature people say you must be so patient because i'll cut I just have regular scissors, nothing special. I don't use a computer. I don't use a, a die cut machine. Um, so it's, I don't have to think about it anymore. I've been doing it for so long and I, I feel guilty if I'm not constantly making something. So um, I'm not patient. I just, this is what I do. So Did cool. I answer the question? Yeah. It's like the cost to entry is a pair of scissors, you know? <laughs> it's so beautiful. All you need is scissors and glue. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But anyone can paint, so, you know, do something else. Yeah, right, right. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, these people that say one thing to you when you're just in the right place to hear it, you know? Or the wrong place to or The hear. wrong place, yeah. I mean, he didn't realize he was setting you off on a whole life of 
Right. But, At first it was crushing and now I laugh about it. So I still, I recycle everything. I've got a frame that I've glued probably 150 pieces of costume jewelry that I had in a bag. That's what you do when you're in quarantine. I have, um, I've been making a lot of rag rugs out of my husband's old dress shirts and old sheets oh. and you're like the poster child for COVID repurposing, man. This is your time. <laughs> and I cook these elaborate dinners. So a lot of people are suffering and I feel bad for them because they don't know what to do. I have no problem staying home. That's yeah, like, right. like, okay, I'll be home. I've got a room full of stuff <laughs> to that's play so, with. So cool. And that's part of kind of what we were, you know, what I was thinking about, you know, of like, I noticed that I'm just becoming more that way, um, you know, just finding things and paying attention to what I already have. And there is so much just in your own house you can make art with, you know? Absolutely, if you look at it, because a lot of people will say, oh, I never looked at junk mail that way. Okay, well, look at it that way now. Yeah. And I feel bad when I'm cutting up a beautiful greeting card that some other artist created because I'm taking their work and just, ha ha, chop, you know, it goes in, but then it gets incorporated so it has another life. Totally great. And I like it when people get close and read, you know, like, what, what is that about? I had one piece that was, had a lot of um, advertisements from Hanes underwear. So when they got up close, their waistband, you know, <laughs> or something about bras, it was pretty funny. I think you may have answered this already, but my apologies. I just got to ask, what do you use to seal your work again? Uh, I use a water-based lacquer. Okay. And I and sometimes a UV coating, which is uh, which I spray on. It's really toxic, and I hate it. <laughs> so you have to do that outside. I, well, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything else I use is non-toxic. I, I use um, like another artist we talked about earlier. I use a glue stick as well because it is acid-free and non-toxic. And all of the, the paint I use is water-based. So um, unless I, if I don't use the UV coating, at least I could tell people that the, the art itself is green, it's eco-friendly and won't leach toxins. And coating it like that will also protect the colors as well, keep them from fading. It does, because if it's under a, a really strong uh, halogen light, it could fade. But right. that makes it more interesting too. <laughs> I can imagine so, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to, to uh, be the villain here, but Nick, we have to be, we're coming up on an hour and a half here. I just know, to be right I know. Just, it goes so fast. I think we could talk to you, Sandy, for, and everyone here just forever, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, really, Sandy. Thanks. Let me just change my camera here. Thanks so much for um, uh, letting us see what, what you're making and just the spirit of, of everybody, you know, like just taking things and being creative with the things that you can make things with. It's just, just like a whole world, really, really great. So um, so any, and we want to find all her information and everything, we're gonna put it all on this PDF. So we, I presume you have an Instagram account and most I people do. will get all of that on there. And uh, again, thank you really, so, so cool. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, um, yeah, we're already, whoa, wow, man, we're already at the end of this thing. I can't believe it. Um, so I'll just share what I'm doing over here. Um, I'm just, uh, you saw I kind of glue, I'm gluing this paper on and I love it. You know, like there's just things that happen that, you know, now I can go back in painting and, um, you know, I'm just starting, but I'm going to be layering and painting with these collage papers. So. Uh, this is a different look that I can bring. It's my work, but I'm assembling it in a different way. So I'm kind of excited about, about doing this. So um, I can't see any comments. I don't know if anyone, any, any questions, but questions like I'm using gloss medium to glue this paper together. Um, that was actually the next question I was gonna ask. Took it right out of my mouth. Yep, yeah, so gloss medium uh, is what I'm using as the glue. And I, you see, I can, because it's acrylic, I can cover the whole thing. It doesn't matter if the glue is, gets on this because this, you know, the whole thing's gonna be coated with gloss medium. 
numerous times as I'm painting this thing. And after you've worked on this for a bit, after you have a chance for it to dry, uh, what do you what do you have any idea what you're gonna do next with it? Well, right now I'm just working on getting an interesting design that, that I like, which I don't yet. Um, but um, then I will see after that. You know, I, I'm painting right now uh, on this, but then I'm gonna put more paper on it and um, kind of go back and forth with it. So yeah, this is this will be a 12 by 12 painting when I'm done with it. This is on a piece of wood, you know, um, and uh, yeah, so it'll just be like my normal painting, but I'm playing around with this because I love making the, I love doing this process, you know, like I love, I love making, creating different materials and paper and there's something about looking at this and deciding if I want to add it into this. It's kind of fun. You're like, I would never think of this, but now I have it. I can add it into it. And it's, it's sort of what we were talking about um, with uh, Emily and frankly, everyone. It's this, the surprise of, oh, wow, let me see if this works. How would this work? Oh, I would never would have thought of that. But because you've got it, you've made it. It's just waiting for you to glue in or incorporate in some way. And it, it creates kind of wonder and surprise, mostly for me, but also for the person looking at it. Um, so I don't have a lot of plans, but I love this kind of thing. See how that, how you get these little lines. I'm gonna sand this when it's dry and you're gonna see the little edges of the paper will come through, which will be really cool. And uh, just, I think you've answered this a couple of times, but people always want to know, um, to, glue, to, to glue these down, are you using matte medium or could you use matte medium if you wanted to? Or? Yeah, anything that's a uh, matte medium or a uh, gloss medium, all of those, even you could even use paint, all acrylic paint is just glue with color out. So if I want to add an element, I can, I can, once this is dry, I can just add gloss medium on here and then adhere, put it back on, you know, getting a lot of people saying that uh, they're working while they're listening and watching this, which is very, very cool. That's the whole point. And it's, it might, you might, might not be as, um, you know, I, I like just listening and getting inspired. I mean, it was so inspiring just seeing what everyone was making today, but then letting it just kind of infuse into your work. This is one of the most fun things that we do. And I do this a lot at workshops, you know, once everyone's kind of in live in-person workshops, once everyone's kind of comfortable and they're making things, just talking and sharing and then just making work. It's kind of like, I had no idea what I was gonna make today, but just listening and playing around ends up with something. So it's, it's kind of fun. It's like being social and making art at the same time and getting inspired. So. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys have been making. So when you finish your things, or even if they're not finished, use the hashtag uh, Kitchen Table Art Project. And um, again, every week we'll you know choose a winner and uh, just random, you know, which is something that's cool. And you'll we have a gift certificate, a fifty dollar gift certificate. It's just sort of like a prize. But we also feature on the Art to Life World Instagram feed that person's work and. Uh, push their Instagram channel and everything like that. And that so, hashtag is for Instagram, right? That's for Instagram, but you can also use that hashtag in the artist face, the Art to Life Artists Facebook group. Sure. Um, there's links. Uh, I think people can put them in the comments where you can join and um, people are making a lot of the, you know, um, using hashtags in there. And so we promote that work as well. And we look at that work. So um, yeah, there's a lot of really amazing stuff being in, made in the um, Art to Life Artists free Facebook group. So please come and come and join us. It's really fun. And uh, any other comments or thoughts, Ferris, before we uh, wrap it up here? No, I'm just checking with our colleagues right now. Um, There's many things to say. Again, yeah. if you want any of this information, if you want to watch the replay, if you want to get the, the PDF download, it'll be available tomorrow. It takes us some time because we have to circle back around and make sure all the links work. It'll be up there tomorrow but you just go to Kitchen Table Art Project. And once you have that link, uh, you can get all the PDFs. Um, there's been a call like this. We've done five or six of these. Um, I don't know how many more we're gonna make do, but uh, we're just kind of doing it because we're all at home right now. So I imagine as things open up a little, we'll probably uh, 
I don't know, maybe uh, do something else, but uh, it's certainly been fun. And we love hearing the feedback from you guys. If you, and if any of you are particularly interested and want to come on, um, let us know in the comments because um, we circle back around with people and, you know, we're just, this is just all about sharing and uh, it's just really, really fun. That's perfect. I think that's it, Nick. Okay. Thanks you guys. Uh, enjoy the week. And again, I'll be talking about another theme on my Sunday vlog. If you want to go get on that list uh, or go to arttolife.com, that's where my vlog is. And I share stuff every week on Sunday and I talk about the theme for the next Wednesday. So we got some cool stuff coming up. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Okay. Bye you guys.